Now, when we have a setup like this with uh, a battery and a lamp, uh, this is called a circuit, an electronic circuit. And we can show what the circuit looks like in the form of a schematic diagram. If you turn in your blue book, if you look in your blue book, actually the blue book is set up in, in a couple of different sections. Um, the front of the blue book is all the, the text, and then right in the middle of it there starts the reference section. And all the parts in the reference section start with the letter R, R1, R2, R3, and so on. The schematic symbols are on page R1 and R2. The schematic symbols are supposed to kind of represent what the part is or, or, or what it does. And the schematic symbol for a battery looks like this. Long line, a short line, a long line, a short line like this. And the long line is the positive side of the battery. Uh, any multi-cell battery is drawn like this. And uh, in this case, this six volt battery here, uh, there's actually four individual cells inside this battery, four individual cells. If I were to draw the schematic diagram or the schematic symbol for a single cell, like a flashlight, like a, like a D cell and a flashlight, uh, it would just look like this. But any, any battery that's more than a volt and a half will, will be shown like this. To show you what the voltage is of the battery, it will generally be labeled off to one side like this. In this case, it's a six volt battery. So that's the schematic symbol for the battery. The schematic symbol for the lamp looks like that. It looks a lot like a lamp. The, the circle is the glass envelope of the lamp and the little curly Q inside is the, the filament. And then of course connecting the two together we have, you know, we have these wires here. And the schematic symbol for a wire is extremely complex. Just a line like that. And when we have all this stuff hooked up, we have what is known as a circuit, C-I-R-C-U-I-T, or in Spanish, circuito, as I just got back from Mexico City, so I'm still thinking like Spanish. Okay, now, in order to have a circuit, you really have to have four things going for you. This is pretty important. In order to have a circuit, and this is actually technically called a complete circuit, you really need to have four things. Number one, you have to have what we call the source. The source of power. Remember I mentioned that a battery is like a pump. Is like a pump for electrons. Instead of pumping water, it pumps electrons. Obviously, if we're going to get electrons to move through a circuit, something has to be pushing them through the circuit. You have to have some, just like water, you need a pump to pump water through a circuit. Electricity is the same way. You need to have something, some source of power. And in this case, the source of power is this battery. The source of power could be like the AC wall receptacle. The source of power could be a power supply like this one is, power supply from a game. Whatever, the, so, the, the, the power source could be a windmill or, or anything. Anything that's providing the push for the, uh, for the electrons is called the source. Then you need to have something that's, that's using the power from the source. If I just have a battery like this with nothing else connected to it, this is not a circuit. This is just the source. In order to have a complete circuit, you have to have something that's going to use the power from the source. And we call that the load. The load is anything that's going to use the power from the source. The load, uh, in this case, is a light bulb. But in a video game or a pinball machine, the load is like the logic board. Or in a pinball, also the load would be the coils. There's another load in the, that are, that's the coils. And it's a whole separate circuit, actually. So you need to have a source and you need to have a load. But you need two other things as well. You need to have a way to get the power from the source to the load. 
you need to have some kind of a conductor, some kind of a wire, some kind of a piece of metal, something that's going to conduct the electricity. And we call that the source path. The source path, the path that the electricity is going to follow as it goes from the source to the load is called the source path. But you wouldn't expect anything to light up with just one wire hooked up. I mean, obviously, if I have my, my battery here, I connect the positive lead to the battery, goes to the light bulb, but I don't have anything hooked up, obviously the light bulb's not going to be on. So you need not only a way to get the power from the source to the load, in this case the light bulb, but you also have to have a way to bring the electric current back from the load back to the source to get the thing to light up. So we need not only the source path, But we also need the path that brings the electric current back from the load to the source. This is very important. This is known as the return path. We're going to talk a lot about source path and return path as we go through the class. And when we have all of these things, when you have the source, <coughs> the load, the source path, and the return path, you have what we call a complete circuit. In order to have a complete circuit, you need to have all these things working for you. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't expect this thing to, 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 to light up if there was just one wire hooked up. And all these things are a complete circuit. According to the schematic diagram, according to the way the schematic diagrams are drawn, electric current flows from positive to negative on the schematic diagrams. The way the schematics are drawn, electric current flows from positive to negative. Huh? Well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute now. I just got finished saying that electricity is these electrons, and these electrons are little, get over here, are little negatively charged things. If, an, if electricity is these little negatively charged electrons, and opposite charges attract each other, electricity really should be going from negative to positive, shouldn't it? When you think about it, I mean, that's what an electron is. And yet, according to the schematic diagram, electric current flows from positive to negative. Well, there's a reason why. And the reason why is that it's only in the beginning of the, 19, of the 20th century, I should say, that we discovered what electricity really is, that we discover what the electron is and all that jazz. But they've been drawing schematics for hundreds of years. I mean, even Benjamin Franklin did a lot of experimenting with electricity. You know, the kite flying experiment where he flew the kite in the storm and, you know, lightning hit the kite and he touched the key at the end of the kite wire and ah, shot the shit out of himself. Oh, lightning's electricity. Hey, no shit, Ben. You know, but he, but he did a lot of experimenting with electricity. Get over here. I don't, I'm not sure why it's doing that, actually. I think the fluorescent lights are messing it up. Anyway, it's got a mind of its own. Yeah, hi, how are you? Okay. Uh, anyway, Ben did a lot of experimenting with electricity, and he also drew schematic diagrams. Well, what they thought electricity was in the beginning was some kind of weird invisible fluid. They thought that electricity was some mysterious invisible fluid, and they thought that some things had too much of this invisible fluid, and they called those things positive. And they thought that some other things didn't have enough of this weird invisible fluid, and they called those things negative, and they said electricity flows from positive to negative, and so they started drawing schematic diagrams that way. Well, when we discovered hundreds of years later that electricity is really these negatively charged electrons, they did not change the way they draw schematic diagrams. Schematic diagrams are still drawn kind of fast backwards. Schematic diagrams are drawn as if electricity was some kind of invisible fluid and it flowed from positive to negative. Now this, this, this concept of electricity flowing from positive to negative is known as conventional current. Conventional current. 
It ain't really the way the electric current flows, but it's, it's the way we draw the schematic diagram. And so throughout this class, almost without exception, when we're discussing electric current flow and we're discussing how things work on, in schematic diagrams and so on, We'll be talking about electric current in terms of conventional current, this concept that electricity flows from, from positive to negative. Now, it really doesn't. Electric current really flows from negative to positive. But since all the schematics are drawn this way, this is the way we need to look at it. Also, it makes it much easier to understand how electricity works. Because when you look at electric current as, as flowing from positive to negative, it works the same way that water does. Everybody knows water flows from a higher altitude to a lower altitude. Same thing with electric current. It flows from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. And we'll talk a bunch about that as we go through the class. I guarantee you this is really very simple. Uh, so as far as we're concerned, when you look at electric current, electric current flows from positive to negative. It would come out the positive side of the battery through the load, that's the source path, and then the return path is, is back to the negative side of the battery. Does that make sense? And as long as we have these four things, we have a complete circuit. The source, the source path, the load, the return path, we have a complete circuit. If something happens and the circuit is broken somewhere, let's say the source path has a break in it, we no longer have a complete circuit. If the source path is broken, this is now known as an open circuit. An open circuit. And in an open circuit, there is no flow of electric current. Obviously, if I break this connection somewhere, I'm not going to get any, any, any light to light up. You know, complete circuit, obviously. If I break the connection somewhere, like break the source path here, open circuit, no current flows. If any current was flowing, obviously the light bulb would light up. Well, if I break the source path, I have an open circuit. But if I break the return path, don't I have the exact same thing? When you think about it, if I break the return path, the light bulb still ain't going to light up. And back to that old thing, nothing lights up with just one wire hooked up. So it doesn't matter where I break the current flow. If I break the source path, no current flow. If I break the return path, no matter where I break it, I can break it down here at the battery, no matter where I break it, the light bulb goes off. Okay? So if we have an open circuit, there is no current flow whatsoever. This is just the opposite of a short circuit. For instance, if I connect some, like a, a metal blade, like a, you know, let's just take this knife blade for instance, across the terminals of the battery. I'm just putting it right across the terminals of the battery. The light bulb goes off. I'm going to pull it up so you can see it. Why? Well, obviously it's much easier for the electrons to go through this nice thick knife blade than it is for them to try to squeeze through the really skinny filament of the lamp. The electrons will take the path of least resistance, I guess you would say. When I have, when I have this, what the hell was that? Oh, I thought something was blowing up on me. And I, thought, and I knew I had unplugged vigilante, so I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Um, if something happens and I end up with a direct path right across a source like this, this is not an open circuit anymore. This is now a short circuit. And in a short circuit, generally you have excessive current flow. That's usually what blows fuses when you have a when you have some kind of a short circuit. So we can have a complete circuit, normal everyday, everything's working hunky dory, complete circuit. If if the path is broken somewhere, we have an open circuit, no current flows, or if we have a direct path right across.